Now, what am I supposed to do with this? I know, you know, sports brings us together and sports also serves as a way of connecting people. One of the things at St. Luke Community UMC we want to do is connect with you. And we recognize also that there are places that we refer to as destinations. Like when you're going to a sporting event, you go to the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. That's a sports destination. Clyde Warren Park in our city is a recreational destination. And if you want to experience great music and, and great art, you go to our arts district. It is a destination. And I want you to know that at St. Luke, we want to be your spiritual destination for your personal and our community transformation. And we wanna do it in multiple ways. We wanna connect you with God and with each other. We wanna also grow you in your faith and relationships with each other. And we want you to connect and serve in this community. And we want to ensure that you are strategically positioned to live out your potential as a leader. And that's what we're focused on as we become your spiritual destination. And I want you to join us, whether it's on Sunday, virtually or in person, or we're out doing something in the community. We want you to be part of what we're doing at St. Luke. And I'll say this last thing, St. Luke is a place where you belong. And I want you to take that to heart. I don't care where you come from, who you are, what your circumstances are, you belong at St. Luke. So I cannot wait to see your face in the place at St. Luke Community UMC. Take care and be blessed. At 11 a.m. Thursday morning, April 25th, the Zan Wesley Holmes Jr. Community Outreach Center is hosting a free lunch and learn session on the topic of going from renting to owning a home. To get details and register, scan the QR code or go to zwhjcoc.org slash classes. Saturday, April 27th, we'll be busy starting with Barber Shop with Pastor Butler and Beauty Shop with First Lady Minister Nisha Strambler Butler at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. respectively on Zoom. It's also Loaves and Fishes Day at Warren United Methodist Church. Sign up on the Church Center app or go to slcumc.org slash loaves fishes. The Dallas Metroplex Musicians Association, along with St. Luke Community United Methodist Church, will be hosting the Jawanda E. Jordan Festival of Negro Spirituals, April 27th at 3 p.m. here in the sanctuary. At the end of this month, we're celebrating our 91st church anniversary with a three-day justice revival. During our church anniversary worship experience on Sunday morning, April 28th, Dr. Dominique A. Robinson from the Seminary of the Southwest in Austin is our guest preacher. At 7 p.m. Monday, the 29th, our guest preacher is Dr. Marcus Cosby, Senior Pastor of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston. And at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, the 30th, we'll close out the revival with Dr. Matthew Ruffner, Senior Pastor of Preston Hollow Presbyterian Church in Dallas. You don't want to miss this extraordinary event in the history of our church. First Friday Prayer with Pastor Butler begins at 7.14 a.m. Friday, May 3rd. Now we're on Zoom. Join online at slcumc.org slash First Friday Prayer. Our next sacrament of baptism will be held Sunday, May 12th. Please register on the Church Center app by Friday, May 3rd. Our United Women in Faith Ministry is hosting its annual scholarship awards tea at 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon, May 18th at the Crown Plaza Hotel Dallas Market Center. The cost is $40. To sign up, go to the Church Center app, scan the QR code on the screen, or go to slcumc.org slash uwf-t2024. Have you downloaded the Church Center app? Scan the QR code now or go to slcumc.org slash cc app. With this app, you can receive important information immediately, whether you're on or off campus. You can register for activities and check in at events, including Sunday worship in the sanctuary or online. Check our latest newsletter for step-by-step -step instructions to set up your account after downloading the app or desktop site. And finally, please join our 100 intercessors in praying for these timely concerns. Standing in the integrity of God's word, godly leadership in our country, a just peace in the Holy Land. Details about these and other activities are available on our website, Church Center app, social media, email, and our monthly newsletter. St. Luke, keep believing and watch God change things. Well, good morning, St. Luke Nation. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Are you happy to be with God and his people on this morning? Amen. Even on this fourth Sunday in Easter, we are here to celebrate the Lord, and we are glad that you are here. And I've come to welcome you this morning. Do we have any guests in the house? 
I see you, I see you, thank you. And to those of you online, we are so excited that you have chosen to join with us today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with us and we are so excited about that. Listen, there's a QR code on your screens and behind your pews. We'd love to connect with you and let you know that we are glad that you're here. On behalf of our senior pastor and all of the St. Luke Nation, we want to welcome you into the house of the Lord on today. Amen. Aren't you glad that God is a, still a prayer answering God? Amen. We want to invite all of you that want to come to the altar this morning. Come and join us in prayer. Come expecting. Come believing. You need a miracle. The miracle working God is here right now. They're coming. For those of you online, we give you praise for what the Lord is doing in your life. And we bless your holy name, oh God. Thank you. We want to keep those that are in bereavement now in our prayers, Billy and Cynthia Radcliffe in the loss of their cousin Willie. Willie Mae Coleman in the loss of her uncle Milton, Lisa Hutchins Jones and John Jones in the loss of their cousin James. And for all of you that are in bereavement that we did not get your name today, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you your throne of grace, and we just bow down before you. Lord, we worship and adore you. We acknowledge you in all of our ways, and we know that you will direct our path. Thank you for allowing us to have an audience with you, oh God. Many others have been too busy. Many others have not been able to allow us into their place in this space. But we thank you that you're omnipresent. And when human beings won't take us in, when we can't meet with them, we are thankful that we can tabernacle with you. With us, oh God, we give you glory and we magnify your name. Just like you showed up and showed out at that magnificent signs and wonders doing this amazing eclipse a few days ago. Only a fool could say that there is no God. As we look at the signs of the times, oh God, we see wars and rumors of wars and chaos and confusion. People are setting themselves on fire in the streets. But your children choose not to be dismayed. But we focus our eyes on you because we know that our help comes from the Lord. We are in it, but we're not of it. And so, Father, as we lift your name on high today, we, we thank you, oh God, that we are like wise virgins. We came to put our oil in our lamps today, oh God. Lord, we pour, ask you to pour into us your power, Lord God, to pour into us fresh oil in, in this house today, oh God. And as we come into your house, we choose, Lord God, to worship and celebrate and serve you and you only. In view of your mercy, oh God, we present ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable and pleasing. For this is our true worship. We choose not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
Come on and wash us. Oh God, pour into us your word today that we may prove which is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. God, we decree today that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who's healing even right now. You are Jehovah Jireh. You're providing for somebody that needs a way out of no way, oh God. You are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who brings peace in the midst of the storm. God, there is a passing of, of all kinds of understandings, but we know that you are our wisdom today. So manifest your wisdom in our businesses, in our homes, in our families, oh God. We need you right now. So God, where somebody needs hope today, pour out your hope and restore. Somebody knows that they need your hand of protection. God, our children need your protection in our schools. We need your protection to follow us wherever we go. God, even judges and juries need your protection today. Supernatural God, do what only you can do. Lord, we know that you have a word for us today. We come like ready people, ready to receive. Now enter in with your light. Pour out your spirit on, upon our pastor today and his family. God, we loose your kingdom to come, and we loose your perfect will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We believe your word. Whose report will we believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. We decree and declare that it is already done, and we're going to put a praise on it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Good morning, St. Luke. Before we present our ministry selection, we're taking a moment to pay tribute to our long-term choir member, Alan Brandon. Alan has joined the church triumphant. Alan Brandon was an active member of St. Luke for many years and served in music ministry as a choir director and pianist for several churches in the local community before his retirement. He was also a career educator in Dallas Independent School District, where he taught elementary and high school vocal and choral music. In retirement, he was very active in the Loaves and Fishes ministry and the chorale. He also shared his wonderful vocal talent with the Dallas Symphony Chorus and the South Dallas Concert Choir. God took him home in February because there is indeed room enough in paradise for Alan Brandon.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Indeed, it is good news to know that even today, there is still plenty good room in glory for you and for me. Won't you please rise and join us in praise and worship this morning? If you love the Lord this morning, sing. I really love you right here. I really love you. Come on, sing to his heart this morning. I really love you. I really love you. Because you first loved me. in his presence but as you go to your seat can you open up your mouth and just begin to bless the name of Jesus yeah, yeah. if you love him Kona go ahead and take just a couple of seconds and appreciate him yes. Hallelujah! Yes. not just for what he's done but just for the simple fact that he loved you enough to send his only begotten son Amen. to die on a rugged cross to pay a price that he did not owe so that we will have the right to life eternally and abundantly. Is anybody trying to enjoy abundant life? Yeah. I know eternity may be secure, but he came to give us eternal life and an abundant life. Yeah. Hallelujah. And this song just puts him in the proper position that says that he's everything to me. Is he everything to you this morning? 
Come on, the song simply says, say everything, everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. to be a couple of things for me. I said, I call him Master, Master. He's my Savior, Savior. Oh, he's my ruler, ruler. Oh, from the sins of the world, Redeemer. Redeemer. From the storm and the rain, he's my shelter. Whatever I need, he's my provider. Jesus, Jesus, you ought to not need the same way you can't lead with 
Jesus. Jesus. Lead with Jesus. 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 Now come on, you got 30 seconds just to give Jesus praise right there. Jesus. You're everything, you're everything to me. Come on, you ought to worship God in the beauty of holiness right there. Because he's everything, yeah. You're everything to me. When I look back over my life and I see all that you've done for me, you're everything, you're everything to me. Food, clothes, and shelter. Money in my pocket, clothes on my back, food when I'm hungry, everything to me. Water when I'm thirsty, a provider, a protector. Hey, he's a way maker. You're everything to me. I know him to be a way maker. I heard he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's everything. everything to me. He's working it out. He's working it out. So stop trying to figure it out. Because he's everything. He's everything to me. Oh, he's the answer. He's the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're everything to me. Hallelujah. We give you glory, oh God. Yeah. You don't have to go silent on my account, okay? And, and some of us have been through enough where we don't need a cheerleader. You know, that, that's on some level what they're doing, trying to get you hyped up. But when you just process what you've been through, and you know it was God who got you through. That right there, I'm going to say that one more time so somebody grab it. When you process what you've been through and you know it was nobody but God that brought you through. I'm going to say that one more time because somebody's going to grab that in just a moment. When you process, that means when you rewind the tape and you think about everything that you've gone through and you look and you know it was nobody but God that brought you through, somebody ought to give him some praise right now. I mean, some real praise. Everything praise. Save your praise. Heal a praise. Deliver a praise. Master praise. Redeem a praise. Hey! Everything to me. Everything to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Somebody needs to get that out. You've been, you've been complaining. Now you just need to say thank you, God. Don't know how it's going to work it out, but thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Somebody, you just got a revelation. Somebody just felt the presence of God, knowing that you have some obstacles that are insurmountable. But you've just been affirmed that it's going to be all right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It, it's all right to cry out. It's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Give God some praise today, right now. We thank God on, on this day that we could hit the ground running from our corral with a song called Glory and climax it being reminded that he's everything. So we thank God for our, for our music ministry here at St. Luke Community, yes. UMC. Yes. As, as we prepare for the word on, on this day, I want to invite you to stand to your feet for the reading of the scripture coming from Matthew, the 25th chapter, starting at verse 14. I will be reading from the New International Version. <clears throat> Again, Matthew, the 14th, Matthew 25, verse 14. Again, it was like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more, but the Man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. The master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. The master replied, well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. The master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what, what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked Lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should put my, put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I return, I have received it back with 
interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, we're going we gonna, to we gonna settle down. <laughs> we're going to close our eyes. We're going to practice our breathing because I believe there is a word <laughs> for us on this day. Close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Try not to think about anything except your breath. Again, that's the connection between you and God. The breath, God breathed into humanity and we became a living being. Breathe in. Breathe out. God, get me out of the way. So as your people hear my voice. I pray that they hear you as they see me. God, I pray that they see you high and lifted up. Now, Lord, if you will, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we declare and we pray. Let the church say amen, 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 amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise because I want you to know there is a word from, from God. We, we've been in this series, this economic empowerment series, Better Money Habits. I, I pray that it is blessing you, it's blessing your household, it's shifting your, your thinking, it's helping you to see things from a different perspective, a different viewpoint. If you remember, we kicked off this series. Of, the first week, we focused on what should be our relationship with money. And we defined described and affirmed that first and foremost, it all belongs to God. And if we capture that, that will help to solidify our relationship with money. It belongs to God and that money should activate your faith. Last week, we, we challenged you to think about how are we to use money? Not just the 10% that God, that first fruit that God desires and expects of us, but what you're doing with the 90, the 90 percent. And we were challenged you that you are to, you got to spend, but spend with discipline. You need to be saving. You need to give and you need to invest. God is calling us because that is about money management. And I want you to think about this. Consider this very, very thought, my brothers and my sisters. The, the reason, to, today we're going to talk about the purpose of money, and, and most importantly, what I, what I want us to think about for our consideration is, as we jump into this text, uh, this could be a, a title. This, this is a title. How to get in your bag. Now, if you are probably 40 and over, you don't know what I'm talking, what that means. Because... How to get in your bag is a contemporary slang or phrase that is used by the next generation. And I know this because I went and had a conversation with the next generation to make sure I had this right. First of all, when I typed this, I originally had how to get your bag. They said, that's not right, daddy. It's how to get in your bag. Get in your, in your bag. And what, 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 what in your bag implies and means, it symbolizes success. It symbolizes you are getting paid. It symbolizes prosperity. So when you're in your bag, it's on. You're doing good. 
You're successful. But, but for those of us who are a little more seasoned, we'll just stick with this. How do you make money? <laughs> Is that a better church your neighbor say, neighbor, how do you make money? <laughs> How do you make money? First of all, some of you are like, now, is this one of these uh, prosperity sermons? No. Because prosperity comes, is a process, y'all. But I want you to understand, prosperity is godly and it is biblical. It is godly and it is biblical. Abraham, the father of many nations, was prosperous in chapter 13, verse 1, so Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all he had lied, his nephew with him. And now, verse 2, now Abram was extremely rich in livestock and silver and gold. Prosperity. Abram was prosperous. Prosperity is godly and biblical. David, the most successful and Greatest king of Israel was prosperous. In 1 Samuel 18 chapter says, and he continued to prosper in all his ways because the Lord was with him. I just want you to understand, Job was prosperous. Now, we know the befall of Job, but understand in chapter, verse 2, chapter 1, he had seven sons, three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 5,000 yoke of oxen, 5,500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. He was prosperous. And there was this widow in the Old Testament in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. She her husband passes away. He is a priest, and, and, and Elijah shows up, and she is in need. She does not have anything. Elijah says, what do you have? And she said, I have a jug and a jar. And this is what Elijah told her to do. He said to her, he said, don't be afraid. Go home and do as I have instructed you. First, make a small loaf of bread for me. And then bring it to me. Then make some for you and your son. And understand, she was at a point where she thought she would die. And then the text goes on to say, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jar and the jug of oil will not run dry. The Lord says this. And so she went away, did what he instructed, and the text points this out. It said, for the jar of flour, in verse 16, was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry. It kept on flowing as the Word of God had instructed her. In other words, even if you are at your lowest point, I want you to understand, God can lift you up and put you on a path of prosperity where it won't run out. It is biblical. And here's my problem, and here's the conundrum. Most of the people we talk about in our society who are prosperous don't love the Lord. Or at least they don't acknowledge. They don't celebrate. They don't give God praise. And that's why I need you to understand that God affirms that it is biblical and it is godly. And that's why last year, if you remember, we had some titans of faith and finance on this stage to affirm, and they look like you and me, to affirm that, yeah, black folk can, can be prosperous. Remember Roland Paris, black folk can be prosperous. Remember Demetrius Sampson, who is a member of this church, we can be prosperous. Send more so we can be prosperous. And there's a whole lot of other you up, up in here who represent that. We need to affirm it, my brothers and my sisters. 
And so this text, this parable of what we know from the King James Version, the parable of the talent. In the NIV, it talks about the parable of the, the bag of gold, the bags, how to get your bag. The parable addresses the question, how do you make money? This, this text addresses the question. And let me say to somebody, how you make money is not running from pillar to post, chasing after the bag. You, you need to settle in on what this text is trying to unpack and help us understand. And that's, that's part of the reason we decided to talk about how to use money before we talked about how to make money. Don't miss that. Because I think it's a tragedy to make money and squander it. That's why the 90%, I, I, again, I always focus, the 10% is God's. But why the 90%, how we managed it, is so critical. Because we have seen people who have been blessed and somehow they lose it all. And so my brothers and my sisters, I want you to understand this text offers building blocks for making money. First and foremost, the master gave them a command. God, God, God is calling you to do something. And understand this, how, how, how do you get your bag? There are five things I want to point out real quick. First of all, five things, ability, knowledge, work, Position and purpose. So those are the five things that, that drive us to, to, to how we make money, how you get your bag. Ability, knowledge, work, position, purpose. Beloved, in verse 14, the text says, the master spoke to them and, and told them, acknowledged all that he was going to give them resources according to their ability. Don't miss that. According to their ability, which references two things. It, it references ability, but it also references knowledge. And so understand, my brothers and my sisters, ability. What, what that means is God has given us all some talent. God has given, gifted us with something. God has given us some skills. Everybody up in here has some. Understand, if you have DNA in you, you have been given something. Gifts, talents, skills, don't miss this, and leanings. Let me, let me, and leanings. We, we all lean some, some shape, form, or way. That some of you up in here, if, if, I, if I threw out some numbers, you could calculate it in your head. Some of you would have to go get a calculator. But, but some of us have a leaning in, in ways that, that others don't. And I want you to understand our, our abilities, especially speaking to my people that look like me, it's not, not all about how fast you can run, how high you can jump, whether or not you can shoot a basketball. God is giving you some other leanings. Because at some point, and I'm a living witness, you are not going to be able to run as fast as you used to. You ain't going to be a jump like you used to. You, you're not going to be the same person you used to Physically, y'all, I can't, I don't run anymore. I speed walk. Because these knees got to last me the rest of my life. And so what we need to understand and grasp that God has given us talents above and beyond our physical abilities. You know, I, 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 I want to apologize because I truly believe some of us need to capture our leanings. I, I'm going to use this person as an example. My mama. Mama, forgive me. I apologize up front. But you know what I realized? My mother is one of the best fundraisers I know. Because she don't mind asking people for money. In order to be a fundraiser, you got to ask folk for money. So she has this, she's part of the uh, 
sister's network uh, for, for breast cancer, and, and they do the Relay for Life. And so she's already, she, her, her, her goal was X. She exceeded it by 400%. Now, but, but what I'm trying to help you understand, I, what, I, what, I, what I, I don't think she recognized this, that she has a gift or a leaning and maybe if someone had tapped into that early in her life, she could have been a major fundraiser, not just fundraising for her single event, but doing that for a living. Because I think some of us in here, you've got a leaning that you don't even recognize, but, but, but you do it naturally. Just like my mama asking folks, because some of y'all, y'all know you don't want to ask. Most of us, we shy away, just like some folk don't want to get in front of people to speak. But there are some kids when they, they don't mind, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. It's that leaning and the challenges we have to recognize and nurture that ability because God gave it to you, y'all. God gifted you with that. That ability, that ability, that, that leaning, that soft skill. That creativity. Beloved, think about this. Joseph had a gift for dreaming. Don't miss this. And he shared his dreams with his brothers and his family. And they tried to squash his dreams. So sometimes, church family, biological family, Watch how you talk to your children and how we communicate because because they they have an idea or they lean in a certain direction and, and because it's not what you think it should be or, or you grew up thinking one way and, and, and God has enlightened them because understand, most all innovation, I mean, I'm sorry, all tradition started out as an innovation. And so somebody had to come up with something that other folk just weren't thinking about. And so that ability is critical, but not only our ability, but, but understand if, and, and that ability will lead you to a place where your, your ability will make room for, your, for you and create some revenue for you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. But not just your ability, but your knowledge. And I just want to know, the knowledge, we should always be in pursuit of growing our knowledge. If you think you know it all, shame, 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 shame. Shame on you. Every day I wake up realizing I, I know less, <laughs> not more or less. I'm curious, more curious now. And when we think about this text, the third servant, y'all, did not see the need to increase his knowledge. Did not see the need. I just want to offer some stats to us from Statica. The median household income in the United States in 2022, from an educational attainment standpoint, if you had a high, do, high school diploma, your median income is around $51,000. College degree, $108,000. Master's, $128,000. A professional degree, $157,000. I hope that sticks with you. Knowledge, keep growing your knowledge. Even if, if you don't have a high school, a college degree, that means go get a trade. Go, go increase your knowledge. Develop yourself because it will add value to your financial livelihood. Understand not only ability, but, but knowledge. But understand this when this text transitions. The, fir the, th the servant who was given five bags of, of gold, it said that he immediately put the master's money to work. You know, we, we live in a society where we, we want easy street. 
if, if I got to put in a lot of work, you know, I'm looking for the path of least resistance where it doesn't require a lot of work, but I'm going to get my bag. Does that exist? And what you need to understand in the context of this text, when he put the money to work, he didn't go to Wall Street to give it to somebody else. He had to work it himself. And so the Bible affirms that we must engage in work. Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to, leads to poverty. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Proverbs 12.24 says, diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Beloved, we must reaffirm Firm the importance and value of putting our money, putting our hands, putting our heads, putting our bodies into activity that requires us to sweat, requires you to think. Don't you know every Sunday, y'all, I work up a sweat because I'm working. Now, I don't care what you think about what I'm saying. I'm working up in here. And if you don't believe it, let me <laughs> wipe it off. Ain't nothing wrong with working. Let, let, let me let you on a little secret. Because when I play football, y'all, my goal was not to sweat in practice. <laughs> See, I was young then. I was trying to, you know, manage my output. But what you don't recognize, my brothers and my sisters, there is some value in earning a little sweat. See, my, my mentor, one of my, my mentors once told me, I asked him, I said, Doc, t tell me about my preaching. You know, give me some feedback. He said, Reverend, he said, you, you have all the tools. You, you, you know how to exegete. You, you have it all. He said, the only thing you're preaching is lacking is blood. In other words, some living, some life. And my brothers and my sisters, when you, when you do some work, you, you got, you'll get some blood. When, when you do some work, your, your hands will have some calluses. When, when you do some work, you, you, you'll, you'll have a reason why, you're, why you need to take a break and, and rest, your, rest your mind. Some of us need to know what it looks like to work. But, but I want you to, I want to offer this homiletical interpolation because why was the master so angry with the third servant, y'all? Why was God, why was he mad with him, y'all? He, he did not disregard the Ten Commandments. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't kill. He didn't cheat. He didn't even covet the others. He just buried. Why? I'm trying to understand why, why, did the, why did the master speak so harshly to this brother, y'all? That when we finish the text, you're like, what does this mean? My brothers and my sisters, I want you to understand. See, he had limited knowledge and he had fewer abilities. But what frustrated the master is that he did not try. He, he, he just didn't try. I don't care if you've got one talent. Put that to work. I don't care. You can look over across the hallway and see somebody else with all this going on. And they've got, they can run, they can jump, they can sing, they can, they can do it all. And you got a half a talent. Do something with what you got. Quit looking at everybody else and focus on what God has given you. St. Luke, there are plenty of churches here in North Texas. I ain't looking at no other church. I don't care what church down south has. I don't care what the church up north has. I want to focus on what we have. 
and what God gave us. You need to understand. With what God has given this church, we can turn this city right side up. If you believe me, give God some praise today. And what God is saying, and not only did he not try, but I think what really ticked the, the master off is that he blamed the master. He said, you mean, you don't sow. You gather where you don't sow. In other words, you reap it off for somebody else. But that's not, that's, that wasn't his business. His business was simply to take what he had been given and do something with it. And he turns around and blames some of y'all looking at me right now. Because you've been given something, but you're ready to blame everybody else for why you can't do what you are called to do. Stop. Get off of your derriere and do something with what God has given you. Get off of it. Do something. And even though you have ability, you have knowledge, and you're being called to work, what we need to also understand in this space of being able to, to get your bag, if you will, is God's Positioning you is essential. God's positioning. Not yours, but God's positioning. Position. So, so beloved, God's positioning is simply this. When it comes to us getting our bag, when it comes to us being able to prosper, where people, place, things, and timing align in your favor. All those things, when you think about some of the things that have to happen, where people, place, things, and timing align, it all come together in your favor. That, that's God's positioning, because let's be real. We've all had those moments where, where the right people were in, the, in place, and we were in the right place. We were doing the right things, but it was the wrong time. Some of us been in situations where you're doing the right thing and you're in the right place and it's the right time, but it's the wrong people in your life. We've all been in situations where it's the right people, it's the right time, you're doing the right things, but it's the wrong place. But when you understand that God's positioning is at work for your good, when the right people at the right time, in the right place, doing the right things, God can turn a myth, take a, a problem and give us a solution and create an opportunity that eyes have not seen nor have ears heard. Amen. God's positioning. Let, 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 me, let me say this to you. Y'all know I, I talk about, and I probably talk about it so much, y'all probably get tired and I'm sorry if I turn someone off from going to SMU because I talk about SMU all the time. <laughs> but you need to understand, y'all know I talk about it all the time. You think that, you know, I was born at SMU, that SMU birthed me. But the truth of the matter is, SMU was not my first choice. Wasn't my first choice, wasn't even on my radar. But I want you to understand what God's positioning will do for you. Because I believe if I, if I had not made that move, I would not be standing here today. But check this out. So, so, so it wasn't my first choice. It wasn't even on my radar. But my brothers and my sisters understand, I thought Oklahoma was my choice. But understand, I realized that was the wrong place. I, I thought University of Houston was a choice. It was the wrong time. I thought uh, uh, Texas Tech was the right location. But that was the wrong situation. And I realized that when God's positioning comes to position, this fruition in your life. God will bring the right people. He will bring the right place. He will bring the right time. He will bring all the pieces together. And you will know without a doubt that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, 
Where, where would you be? Beloved, position. You, you, you want to you get your bag? You need to understand it's God's positioning, which means you can't manipulate it. You can't dictate it. You can't bribe it. Well, you could, but it ain't going to last. But if you want something that will be a blessing, and if you want to be a blessing with what God has given you, recognize God positioning in your situation. The, the, the last thing I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, get your bag, understand your ability, get more knowledge, do your work, remember God's positioning in the whole situation, and finally know your purpose. Know your purpose in all of this. After teaching on how to make money, that's what this text is about, he instructs on what the purpose of money is. Don't miss this. John Wesley, in his sermon, The Use of Money, reminds us, first, gain all you can. Second, save all you can. Third, give all you can. The purpose of, of money. There's a whole movement here in this country and globally called effective altruism. And it contends, and it's, there's an element called Earning to give. In other words, people are pursuing high earning jobs and professions so they can make a lot of money to turn around and give it all away. Purpose. Beloved, what I'm trying to help you understand, you, you, you want to make money to, so that what you make will be blessed. Let me say it one more time. You want the money you make to be blessed. And then you want it to be a blessing. But what you need to understand when we look at this text, not just the text that was read, but no, there is a reason the parable of this talent, the parable of the gold coins or, or the gold bags proceeds Jesus separating the goats and the sheep. Just stay with me for a moment here. So we read verses 14 to 30. But if you move from 31 on to 46, the end of the chapter, that is where Jesus literally separates the goats and the sheep. Now understand, he, we've just been instructed how these servants have been given money and they've made it and they, they, they brought back returns. And then Jesus transitions to teach or to instruct us on the separating of goats and sheep. Beloved, what, what, what Jesus is trying to, to help us understand the purpose of money, the purpose driven around our making of money. You need to understand the making of money is, is not so that you can get the biggest house on the corner. The, the, the purpose in making of money is not so that you can get your name on Forbes Riches list. The, the purpose of making money is, is not so that people can be in awe of you because of what you drive, or what kind of clothes you're wearing. That, that's not the purpose. And, and that's why Jesus breaks it down this way. And he says in, 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 child, in verse 31, he says, when he finally arrived, blazing in beauty and all his angels with him, the Son of Man will take his place on his glorious throne. And then all the nations will be arranged before him and he will sort the people out. Much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. But understand this, he's not separating them because those who called on his name and those who didn't, don't miss this. He separates them because of this very notion. And then the king will say to those on his right, the, the sheep, enter who are blessed by my Father, take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's formation. And here's why. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was homeless, you gave me a room. When I was shivering, you gave me clothes. When I was sick, 
you stopped to visit. When I was in prison, you came to me. Those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we see you hungry? When did we feed you? When did we clothe you? When did we give you drink? He said, when you did it to the least of them. The, the purpose of money. The sheep's use of their money resources was purpose-driven, y'all. But note this. He then turns to the goats. And we all want to be goats, right? The greatest of all time. You need, you need to watch some of these cliches we use. Jesus says he turns to the goats, the ones on his left. Get out, worthless goats. You're good. You're good for nothing. But the fires of hell, and this is why. It wasn't because you didn't call my name. But when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. Y'all, he's talking to the church. When I was homeless, you gave me no bed. When I was shivering, you gave me no clothes. When I was sick and in prison, you never visited. My brothers and my sisters, the goats, the greatest of all time, use their resources. The use of their resources wasn't purpose-driven. I hope somebody's grabbing that right now. Purpose-driven. I just want to say this. Purpose-driven means that we are called to do good with our resources. Not harm, but good. We are called to build, not tear down. We are called to create, not destroy. Do good. Purpose-driven means that what we do glorifies God. So when you get your dollar, or when you get your, I was about to say your lottery winnings. <laughs> and if you do, remember, 10%. 10% because it belongs to God, right? But whatever you get, God should get the glory in the use of those resources, which challenges us. And we all wrestle with this, and I'm finished. We get a dollar, we get a hundred dollars, we get a thousand or ten thousand, whatever that number is. And the question we should be asking ourselves, with what I want to do with this, does it give God glory? You might have a little more money in your pocket if you actually ask that question. You, you might be able to, when, when, when the need arises, when someone's hungry, when someone's in need, when, when someone's in prison and needs somebody to visit them, and, and you're like, I really wish I could, but if you had, asked, had had the conversation with God or thought to yourself, does this give God glory? Maybe you would not have made that purchase that now has you strapped, and now you're not in a position to fulfill what it means to be a sheep, and now you're living like a goat. Let, let, me, let me say this. There, there was a, a, a young Wall Street investor who went on a, a vacation uh, to a remote island. And when he arrived, he just chilling, relaxing, you know, and enjoying himself. And he notices this, this fisherman who's bringing in all these fish and and. He starts to talk to the fisherman. He says, man, it looks like you, you got a good business here. He said, yeah, we, we, we do fine. There, there, is, there is a great section out on the water where, where it's just it's great catch. And he says, have you ever thought about growing your business? 
He's like, no, I've never thought about that. He said, well, you know, let, let's give that some thought. You know, I'm a Wall Street baker, man. I could, I could hook you up. We, we could blow this thing up so we could get you. You, are, you have one boat. We, we could get you four or five boats. And, and then we could expand and, and move to, because you know of some other areas where, where there's great fish. He said, yes, I do. He, he said, we could, we could get you more boats. And, and we, could, we could even take this public. And, or, or if we don't take it public, we can grow it to a place where I, I know there will be some folk who want to buy your business. And, and when they buy your business and, and you have all this money, what do you want to do? And then he said, I, 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 I would suggest maybe you just want to retire to a deserted island. And the fisherman looked at him and said, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm on a deserted island. My brothers and my sisters, understand purpose driven with your money. Purpose driven. You can chase after gods that cannot save you. But if you desire the God who did save you, and when he orders your steps, understand what joy that brings. Beloved, I praise God on this day because I believe God is doing a powerful thing in our lives when it comes to to one of the most challenging areas of our lives, finances. People don't get excited at church when we start talking about money. But step outside of these walls and we show up to seminars about money. But I praise God because God is doing something that eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, or nor can we report what God is going to do in our lives when we take this word and apply it to our lives. The last thing I will say is our call to action this week. Our call to action. We're finishing this series. Our call to action is this. I need you to establish, and maybe you already have a budget, but I need you to establish a budget. That means your first fruit, the 10%, and then how you're going to manage the 90. How you're going to spend, how you're going to save, how you think about giving, how you want to invest. And I want you to think about that budget, and I want you to focus on living on that budget for the next 30 days. Take a picture. Take a picture of that. Take a picture for the next 30 days. Some of you, and, and, and let me say this, some of us are, it might be in a place where we don't, we don't have to worry about a budget because you know, we have a lot of disposable income. You're blessed. But you, I want you to remember, part of Joseph the dreamer, when he showed up and shared the dream with Pharaoh, that a fair famine was coming, some of us need to be putting some stuff away. That, that's part of your budgeting. How you gonna, it's not just what you're spending, but what you're going to save. And then when a blessed opportunity comes along where someone has a, a chance for you to pour into them to make an investment, you actually have some money to make that investment. Or when your church says, we're about to launch a capital campaign. <laughs> that is a teaser because <laughs> it's coming. But it's all for the kingdom, y'all. Because this church's best days are not behind it. It's ahead. And if you believe that, I want you to give God some praise. And if you believe your best days are ahead, I want you to give God some praise. How he's going to fix some things because you're going to live this word out in your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this word. For these are your people. God, I, I declare and I decree that this word has not gone void, but it is challenging us, it's calling us to recognize our abilities, to strive for more knowledge, to put in the work, to recognize your positioning in all of this. And to know that there is a purpose. 
There is a purpose in the use of our money. And God, we want to give it back to you right now. So I thank you for the decisions that are being made on this Sunday morning. I believe shackles are being loosened. I believe minds are being shifted. That you are setting us free. And I praise you right now for the victory that we have in you and through you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise today. I want to offer, first of all, I want you to know here at St. Luke, we want to be your, your, your spiritual destination. We want you to know you, you don't have to go looking anyplace else. We're here. We got what you need. We want to connect you to God. We want you to grow in your, your relationship. We want to set you up so that you can be all that God is calling you to be. And we want you to know, recognize the leader that's in you. We're, we're not bringing you here so that you can be a follower. God has called you to lead. And so I want to extend this church as a place for you to call home on this Sunday morning. So if you don't know Jesus, I want to extend that to you today. If you don't have a church, I want to know, I want you to know St. Luke is a place for you to call home. And if you simply need prayer, we're here to pray with you for your situation. You stand in one of those positions. When we stand up, I want you to step out and come forward on this Sunday morning. If you're with us in person, will you stand to your feet right now? If you're able, and if you'll come down right now, come on, come on, come on, come on. You need Jesus, come on down. You need a church. We're the place. Come, my brother, my sister. Give myself away. Come, come. I give myself away. So you. So you can use me. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. We'll wait on you. be seated. celebrate on this Sunday the decisions that have been made. I praise God. You may not have come down, but I believe somebody's made a choice on this day to leave this place different than the way they came in, and we praise God for that on this day. <clears throat> As we've been in this series in particular, since we, we talked about the idea of getting your bag and the process of making money, one of the cornerstones of our, our society and community 
and a driver of our economy are what we classify as entrepreneurs, business owners. And so if you are a business owner with us in person, I want to invite you to come to the altar right now. If you're, if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, you started something, I want you to come on down, come on down, come on down, all of you. Give God some praise for those who... We thank God for you. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We, we moving from, from spenders, from consumers to owners, y'all. Come on down, come on down, y'all. Fill in, fill in, fill in, fill in, fill in all the way. <clears throat> so what, what we want to do on this day, because you know what it's like to have to deal with payrolls and budgets and knowing that not just your livelihood, not just your family, but there are people who work within your enterprise that depend on you. And so we want to, to recognize you in God's holy ecosystem of making money that is purpose-driven. And so we're going to offer a prayer of consecration, blessing upon you. And then when you turn to go back to your seat, there will be a pastor stationed to simply anoint you. As people of faith, we want God's positioning. I want God's positioning all over your stuff. And so we just want to speak, we want to touch, and we want to claim things on your behalf as you continue to seek to do and to be all that God is calling you to be as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. So right now, let us pray. Holy God, we thank you. Because Abram kicked off this entrepreneurial theme a long time ago. And generation after generation has carried it forward. And we thank you for this, this group of men and women who have taken on the risk, the burden of starting something of buying something, leading something. We thank you for their courage. We thank you for their vision. We thank you for their passion. Now, God, I pray that you will renew them in this very moment. Father, I don't know what they stand in need of. I don't know where their business is. But God, I thank you because you do know. You are all knowing. You know my stuff and you know everybody else's stuff all at the same time. So on their behalf right now, I pray, Lord, that you will meet payrolls if that's what's needed, that you will bring the right employees if that is what is needed. God, if you will offer them new opportunities, whatever it is they stand in need of, in the name of Jesus, I am believing it on their behalf, God. We stand in agreement. We stand in the gap on their behalf, decreeing and declaring, God, that what you have allowed them to bring to fruition, God, that there is still more. There is a brighter future. There are more opportunities. There is expansion. And Lord, the prayer of Jabez, that you enlarge their territory. God, that they have overflow, Master, that they cannot take it all in, God. And they are always reminded that there is purpose in what they're doing, and that they are not goats. They are your sheep. And so when the call, the, Jesus does his roll call, when people were hungry, when people were naked, when people were sick, that these entrepreneurs stepped up and did their part to support God's kingdom. So we thank you right now on this day for the great work, for the impact that they're having, for the lives that they're changing. 
and for the stewardship they are providing. We decree, decree it, we declare it, and we believe it, and now let them live it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give God some praise. As you turn around, as you turn around, we have pastors who want to anoint you. This may take a moment. Just be patient with us. Just be patient with us. We celebrate you on this Sunday morning. We celebrate. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. And as you are being anointed, I want to just let you know, today we, we are kicking off a program for entrepreneurs and business owners called Engage One, y'all. Engage One. It is designed to inculcate a growth mindset for entrepreneurs. Thank God. Give God some praise. We, we, we wanted to take a moment to, to highlight and to consecrate and just pray over you and anoint you. And I also want you to know we're about to kick off a whole initiative called Engage One. It's a ministry designed for entrepreneurs who support the inculcation of a growth mindset as you seek to continue to grow your business. One, we're going to uh, enlist you to sign up and join our business director. We are going to make sure that is active again. So we're going to start that process. So you, you will know who does what here at the church and out in the community. We want to support you that way. <clears throat> in the fall, in the fall, we're going to spot, do an uh, entrepreneur spotlight and we want to interview and, and spotlight various entrepreneurs and their work and what they're doing. And then we want to create a growth mindset curriculum to help support you in your work, physical, mental, spiritual, and financial outlook and well-being. And then we want to, in a couple of years, and this is, this is going to happen when our, when our expansion is complete, 
the, one of the first events we're going to host is going to be a marketplace symposium to talk about economic empowerment for this community. I'm hoping that, a, I'm hoping that will be the first event that happens here, but we, we'll see how the Lord works that out. Amen. Amen. So thank you to those who have taken that leap of faith in the space, in the realm of business, ownership, and entrepreneurship. My brothers and my sisters, we're, 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 almost, we're almost done, but I just want to remind you of some ministry opportunities and how your giving is at work here at St. Luke Community UMC. Remember, this next week is our church anniversary celebration. <clears throat> 91 years. And please know, next Sunday, the commemorative booklet for our 90th will be available. So those of you who uh, bought, bought ads, you will be able to see that. I have not seen it. They, they wanted to show it to me. I said, I want to be surprised next Sunday, just like everybody else. So we'll unveil that. And then next Sunday, remember, we kick off our Justice Revival with Dr. Dominique Robinson, who will be our preacher next Sunday. She's from the uh, Seminary of the Southwest in Austin as a part of our just as a part of the, the Texas Triangle on Monday evening at 7 p.m. The Reverend Dr. Marcus Cosby will bless us from the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Amen. And then on Tuesday, the Reverend Dr. Matthew Ruffner, senior pastor of the Preston Hollow Presbyterian Church, will close us out. It's going to be on. It's going to be a blessing. It's our first revival since we've come out of this pandemic. So everybody, and here's what I want to want you to do. I want you to invite at least one person. I'm not asking you to invite five, but try to get one person to come join you for our justice revival. Amen? Amen. So we're excited about next week. I want you to also know that on this, 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 this coming Saturday, uh, actually this Thursday, part of, uh, part of economic empowerment work, you know, the Zan Wesley Holmes Community Outreach Center is, is, is a part of this church that, that it was birthed here. We still support the work of it. Uh, the board members are members of our church, and they will be hosting a free lunch and learn session on from going from renter to owner, from renter to owner. Again, this whole concept around economic empowerment. And then on Saturday, our barbershop and beauty shop will take place. And then also on Saturday, we will serve our unsheltered brothers and sisters for our loaves and fish. Please go to our website or go to the Church Center app to get all the details for these ministry opportunities. And that's, in a nutshell, some of your giving at work here at St. Luke Community UMC. We thank you, God, for this moment that highlights our giving at work. Now, God, I pray that you will call your people to continue to support the life-changing ministry of this church as we seek to empower, as we seek to liberate, as we seek to set captives free, as we seek to strengthen and to give people the resolve the resilience and the energy and empowerment, God, to move forward and to walk clearly in their destiny, fulfilling their God-given potential. This church stands in the gap on behalf of so many people. So we thank you right now for every individual who continues to support it so that it is not stagnant, but is moving to the next level. We thank you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. I pray and I hope for you it's been a good day here at St. Luke Community UMC. If it has, give God some praise on this Sunday. And so as we prepare to depart from this place, I want to encourage you to take the lessons that God has offered us through this worship experience and through this word. Apply them. Live it. Get your budget together and try to live on that budget for the next 30 days. You might be surprised what you have left over and what you can do with, with it. And so now that our worship has ended, our service begins. Because we're not a goat church. We are a sheep church. When somebody was hungry, we did it. When they were in need, we stepped up. And I just want to celebrate you for what you have done and what you will continue to do. I leave this with you, my brother and my sister. May your troubles keep you near the cross. And may your struggles show. Hey, you
bad days prove that God is good. May your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross, and may your troubles show that you need God, and may your battles in the way they should, and may your bad days prove that God is Would love to meet you and greet you down front. Go in peace and be blessed. Junior Community Outreach Center is hosting a free lunch and learn session on the topic of going from renting to owning a home. To get details and register, scan the QR code or go to zwhjcoc.org slash classes. Saturday, April 27th, we'll be busy starting with Barbershop with Pastor Butler and Beauty Shop with First Lady Minister Nisha Strambler Butler at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. respectively on Zoom. It's also Loaves and Fishes Day at Warren United Methodist Church. Sign up on the Church Center app or go to slcumc.org slash loaves fishes. The Dallas Metroplex Musicians Association, along with St. Luke Community United Methodist Church, will be hosting the Jawanda E. Jordan Festival of Negro Spirituals, April 27th at 3 p.m. here in the sanctuary. At the end of this month, we're celebrating our 91st church anniversary with a three-day justice revival. During our church anniversary worship experience on Sunday morning, April 28th, Dr. Dominique A. Robinson from the Seminary of the Southwest in Austin is our guest preacher. At 7 p.m. Monday, the 29th, our guest preacher is is Dr. Marcus Cosby, Senior Pastor of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston. And at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, the 30th, we'll close out the revival with Dr. Matthew Ruffner, Senior Pastor of Preston Hollow Presbyterian Church in Dallas. You don't want to miss this extraordinary event in the history of our church. First Friday Prayer with Pastor Butler begins at 7.14 a.m. Friday, May 3rd. Now we're on Zoom. Join online at slcumc.org slash First Friday Prayer. Our next sacrament of baptism will be held Sunday, May 12th. Please register on the Church Center app by Friday, May 3rd. Our United Women in Faith Ministry is hosting its annual scholarship awards tea at 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon, May 18th at the Crown Plaza Hotel Dallas Market Center. The cost is $40. To sign up, go to the Church Center app, scan the QR code on the screen, or go to slcumc.org slash uwf-t2024. Have you downloaded the Church Center app? Scan the QR code now or go to slcumc.org slash cc app. With this app, you can receive important information immediately, whether you're on or off campus. You can register for activities and check in at events, including Sunday worship in the sanctuary or online. Check our latest newsletter for step-by-step -step instructions to set up your account after downloading the app or desktop site. And finally, please join our 100 intercessors in praying for these timely concerns. Standing in the integrity of God's word, godly leadership in our country, a just peace in the Holy Land. Details about these and other activities are available on our website, Church Center app, social media, email, and our monthly newsletter. St. Luke, keep believing and watch God change things.